Hey everybody, welcome to this new part of the ZBrush initiation course. Here I'm going to teach you how to use a reference image so that you can work much, much better. Here, as you can see, we have this sphere that we put in in the DynaMesh. You can put in a sphere or a cube, depending on what you want to model. Uh, now we're going to use a sphere. Now we're going to draw, and in this panel, just further down, we have frontal, lateral, right, left. So yeah, we'll choose where we want to project the image. In this case, we want to choose frontal. Okay, so here, as you see, we have the front and the back of the image. So open map one and import. Choose the image wherever it's been saved to. In this case, I'll choose an image that I made some time ago. It's, it's a meerkat. I was a student when I did that. And I'll put this image at the front. So here we have it. Now let's go back to draw and in map two, we can put in the back view, go back, import. All right, go back to draw. And now in the same left and right, place the lateral views of the meerkat. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, we had the floor activated. We can see all of the elements in their correct position. If we had a top view of the meerkat, we could also position it. When you want to look for these kind of images, uh, we have to work with blueprints. This isn't really a blueprint, it's simply an image that I did, I made in different takes. But if we go to Google and look for blueprints, we'll see a ton of images that are like schematics or, or planes of a concrete objects, like how to make them, you know? For example, let's go to Google and we'll search for blueprints. And I'm gonna show you Um, some blueprints, a series of images that we can use as references. Okay, let's go to images. Here, as you can see, there's a lot of schematics. For example, houses, cars, planes. In this case, see, this is a blueprint of a um, technical image. In this case, of a vehicle that we can take now to Photoshop and cut them to use them later in ZBrush. Later in Draw, we have different options to modify this element. For example, we can go to the to the frontal view and in adjust, in this case we're in the back view, we can modify these points to frame the image a little bit better. Okay, we'll hit OK. And now we'll do the same thing with the rest of the elements. All right, let's go to draw, map one, adjust. Okay. All right. And finally, the lateral. So draw, left, adjust. We'll do like this in this case. Okay. As well as making these modifications, we could also, well, in this case, we have the image rotated, so it might be better to put it to one side, uh, on the other side. So there's no problem to do this. We go to draw, and here in flip, we can flip it. We can invert it or rotate the image like this. Okay. All this can be modified with it without any kind of problem. Uh, once we have all these planes positioned, you can see it's very easy to model now. So activate the symmetry. And obviously, we can start to model. You know, coming from our reference image, as you can see. Here, for example, this image, we could perfectly go to draw.
But here, you can see in horizontal offset, we can center the image better, for example, like this. Okay, so we can always work with this type of reference, above all from a frontal or lateral image. If we want to move this image a little left, as you can see here, we just go to the back vision, and here we can move and center our image better, like this. And this way we can work better on our image. Okay. This is used a lot in character designs. For example, maybe for a video game company, there could be a, a number of conceptual artists that are the ones that create the characters in pencil, and then a 3D artist, uh, model artist, that, cre that you know creates the character with the references that the illustrator has given him. Here, as you can see, we can easily work with Dynamesh and have the image in the background and we can model all of this quite relaxed, actually. Yeah, we just put in Dynamesh and we're just going to go on. Let's see it. Let's inflate this a little bit like that. Apply Dynamesh. I'm going quite quickly, but the procedure is obviously, well, it's this one. The head too. All right, so I suggest that you look for some blueprints on the internet. For example, character designs, maybe. You can put it in, you can download them and you can cut them up in Photoshop, just like in little views, as I, and you know, as I've shown you. And then you can put it in here to work on, okay? Okay, so this lesson is very short, but I hope this has been really useful for you and that you like the explanation. And we're going to continue now to the last lesson. We're going to see in a global way everything we've been doing throughout the course. We'll make a creature and we'll put in practice everything we've done, okay? I hope you like this. I'm going to finish this off. Just wait a second. All right, that's like that. Then we have the tail. And there are the legs. Okay. The arms will go around here. We can make a mask with dots, All right? So like that, more or less. We're gonna invert. And now we can stretch the area to start to make the beginning of the arms. Later, remember that with Dynamesh, we can update the geometry. Now we can inflate the arms not without making a selection first with the mask. Here in stroke, we'll get the lasso. And then we're gonna inflate them a little bit. Okay, we would have to adjust all this a little bit more obviously. But the main idea would be for you to remember all the procedures of how to put an image in the background, okay? I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you guys in the next exercise. See you later.